Let's make the fastest review of a virtual instrument on YouTube. Go. Well, if you need more than that, don't touch that dial. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. Before we move on, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you will get all the content I'm producing. It also helps me quite a bit. And if you want to wait until the end of the video and if you like it, then you can do that too. Anyway, Spitfire recently contacted me again with another percussion library. Jesus. This time it's the metal percussion, and boy, did they include a lot of instruments in this one. Let's quickly go over the UI if you're not familiar how this works. You can also check out my previous review of the other percussion libraries where I go a little bit more into detail. Now we have the expression layer CC11, which is basically volume control. Now you don't need to use it that much because you use most of the expression with the dynamic layer in this case. Then we have a modulation, which is only used for rolls. And I'm going to show that more later. Then this big wheel in this case is reverb or tightness. If you have reverb on, you can just add a little bit more. You can't remove it because it's recorded in a very nice room. If you want to remove more of the reverb, you have to work with the mic controls later. Tightness is basically, you can say if you want the sample to start a little bit later. This could be good if you find that you're not tight enough when you record. I actually never changed it. I, I don't have a problem with it. The three dots here are important, especially the roll end. It's on by default, and that means when you lift the key after roll, you will hear an end sample, an end hit. Sounds more natural. This one I usually turn on. It isn't by default, and that means I can decide what dynamic layer I want to use after a roll. So I can hit softly or hard, and I get a different dynamic sound there. I like that. Then down here, we have the different articulations or tools. And you can also use all in one. I really appreciate this because then you don't have to use so many key switches if you want to change between these articulations. Down here, we see that everything is grouped into colors, so it's very easy to find. I don't know if this works on the NKS. I haven't managed to do it yet, but maybe I have messed something up. But otherwise, what I really like is that each sound has two keys, so it's easy to play. Like You can also do two-handed layout, so you have the same thing up here. That way, you can play other like this, you know? or like this, whatever you prefer. Now, we also have my controls. This you should really familiarize yourself. I'll go a little bit deeper in my previous video. The great thing about this is that you have so many options in terms of sound, and you can also remove the reverb tail quite a bit this way. If you find it too overwhelming, just go to less advanced. Then we have FX, which is not that much. It's also the release. Otherwise, it works the same as up here. Again, if you need more detail, check out my previous video. So here's the brake drum. I didn't know that brake drum is actually a brake drum from a car. I think that's fantastic. I mean, drum means two things here, but it sounds pretty cool. And you have two different ways of playing it. So the polybeater and the rubber mallets. So. Or the rubber mallet. And it's really easy to play dynamically and really easy to play it fast. Let's check out the China symbol. And this is a great example to show you the layout, how good it is. Down here, if I hit any of these keys, I get a normal splash. But the dynamic layers are fantastic. I can easily make a roll here. Check it out. Just like that. Or if I want it to be choked, I hit the black keys. Same thing. If you don't want to make your own rolls, you can use the module here and click any of these keys. And if I want to choke to one, I hit the next key, same thing. Now up here, I have time synced ones that go after your DAS tempo. Now you have to have your tempo on and hear the click for this to make sense. But you basically have a long one and a choke one. Now here we're getting into interesting bows. And this is so good. I, I have a friend who do this sound design and I'm not gonna need him anymore. No, not really. Or you can have a full one. And this one here, you just hold it in and it goes on forever. Scary. Then we also have scrapes. 
and longer ones. And up here, I really like this, it just sticks on, you know, as a symbol. But what's so great again is the dynamic layers here, check this out. It just goes from that hit until splash, there's so much variety here and you really can hit the, the symbol the way you like it. I wanted to show you the crashers and stack because I didn't know what that was and now I know, so I'm learning new things every day and now you know too, you can see that on the picture. So here's what it sounds. Now, what I like about this is that you also can hit it with a different tool. And even though it might sound the same, it is a different feeling. So here's the same thing, but now with a rod. Which is different and gives you a different feeling. Let's see the difference here again. Stick, rod. And I really like this depth because it gives you so many more options to try new sounds. Who knew you can make so many different interesting sounds with oil drums? Also, if you use this super ball, you get these very interesting sounds. Kind of scary, almost sounds like a brass instrument. With this library, you get more Piatti than you ever thought you needed. In the sections, you get different sizes, but also different ways of playing them. So you have the long one, then the choked, and then damped and then also scrapes. And then obviously you get different versions. If you are a construction worker and also have some musical talent, or perhaps you work in Ever Oats putting up mics and lights, you have come across scaffolds. In the small metal sections, you do get a lot of instruments, but not only that, they're really deeply sampled. Let's check out the Agogo. You also get another version. And then Beltry. Cabasa. Chain drops, I didn't know of them, basically chains dropped in a big trash can. Cowbells, really deeply sampled, not only one hit, but actually a different hit when you hit on a different place. So, and show, and you get a few more versions. Finger symbols. Not so much, but good sample. Guira. Mark tree, and you get a lot of up runs and different runs up and down. Then there's more. Reco Reco is similar to Guira, but different material. Then sleigh bells, very important for Christmas music. And then spring coil, very interesting one. Then tambourine, and boy do you get a lot of samples here. Now I'm not a great tambourine player, but if you know what you're doing, you can create really realistic good results here. Then triangles, you do get quite a bit of sounds here. Choked and longs. 
And then finally, wind chimes. The suspended symbol works the same as the China symbol. It's just a different sound. And you have many versions of them too. And then you can have brushes, sticks, little jazz there, and then bows. And finally, scrapes. Tam tams are really fun, but I think most people use them only for the big hit, the big gong. And there's actually quite a few more things you can do with it. So, first, just a mallet and choked. But you can obviously do a roll really easily here on your own. Here's another one. But then if you add a super ball, you get some interesting results. Or scrapes. Great for adding effects into a movie. Thunder Sheets was a great way to add effects back in the day, maybe a thunder explosion in theater, but also really useful in orchestra. But it's not just a big bang, you know. It can also be used in other creative ways to create really interesting sounds. For example, if you use dreads, or bows. Or our great friend, the Super Bowl. Crash cans might not sound that exotic, but seriously, this is one of my favorite instruments in this library. Great for trailers and epic movies. The water phone is not a phone with water, as you might think, but actually created by an American called Richard Waters. So he called it the water phone, just like sax call it the saxophone. So this is a really important instrument if you want to have that scary sound that is used so much. You can also hit the instrument. So, what are my thoughts about this library? Well, maybe you've seen my previous video about the first two libraries in this series. And, as I really like those, I love this one as well. It sounds absolutely fantastic. I have to put it like this. Have you ever used a really, really good instrument? I mean, high quality, like a great piano, great guitar, great percussion. And even if you might not be the best player at that instrument, you just still feel inspired because the sounds that you get back from it is so interesting and you might try new things you haven't thought about before. And this is actually what I feel about this library. This is the first virtual instrument where I really feel like the feedback from the samples are so varied and deep and interesting that I want to try new things. It's not just about hitting a drum a certain way. It's really many different ways and with sticks and different tools and hands and where you hit it. And the dynamic layers are so varied that I feel like I'm really kind of playing the real instrument and I want to try new things I haven't thought of before. This is the best percussion library on the market and I think that's what Spitfire was trying to do. I'm not trying to sugarcoat them at all. 
They haven't sponsored me. They haven't told me what to say. This is my humble opinion. Now, there are alternatives out there like uh, Cine Samples Percussion and maybe East West Percussion is pretty good, but they don't have this quality at all, even though they might have some other interesting and varied percussion. Now, the negative side of this is the price, but it also makes sense because of the quality. Now, if you're gonna get all of these libraries, that's gonna be very hefty for a wallet. I don't know this because Spitfire has told me nothing, but I suspect that there is gonna be more percussion libraries because there are no tuned percussion so far. And if you're gonna include them in your orchestral templates, then you're gonna need some serious hard drives. This is a great recommend if you can afford it. There's nothing that beats it in my humble opinion. That's it for this review. And if you enjoyed it, please let me know by hitting the like button and subscribe. Also write a comment if you think this is a good library or not, or if you know any better ones. If you wanna support me even further, why not become a patron? I have tiers for all the different budgets, and in some tiers, I also give you some of the access to my MIDI files, for example. Until next time, don't buy too many expensive libraries, write a lot of music, and take care.